look at the state of these walls. So this back wall here is definitely one of the worst affected and that's because there are roof tiles missing. So as soon as it rains, water pours down this wall and then this is north facing. So it never gets any sun on it to dry out. And as a result, lots of moss grows and lots of grime and dirt builds up. If you've seen my last videos, you'll know as well that this building inside and out is covered in this really tough and hard concrete mortar. So I wanna use a pressure washer to first of all, get off the dirt so I can actually see where the stone ends and where the mortar starts. But I also want to see how much of this concrete mortar can the pressure washer remove? Cause maybe that can do a little bit of the work for me. But before I can get the pressure washer out and start cleaning it, I actually need to find a way to get some water down here because at the moment this is off grid. There's no water down this end of the property. So I need to rig up a system to store some water, get a little bit of pressure for the pressure washer to start. So I'm gonna head back up to the main house, get the supplies, and start putting this into place. It was such a squeeze trying to get this in. As you can see, I've had to separate the, oh, the bottom pallet from the top, which I don't think the guy in the shop was too happy about, but uh, yeah, it fit, which is great. So I had to take the doggy cabin out this morning uh, in order to get this in. But now we've got this big thousand litre IBC. So now it's the case of getting this out, reassembling it, and then getting it down to the other end of the property. doing a bit of sunbathing. It is a beautiful crisp autumn morning today. So I've just done about 10 trips uh, to and from the main house to bring supplies down to the bottom end of the property. But now I'm all set, I'm ready to go. So I've got some breeze blocks, time to get this IBC raised and level. So there we have it, four little breeze block pillars. And now I just need another set of hands to help me get the IBC up on the blocks. So I think Victoria's on a break at the moment from work. So I'm gonna grab her quickly and get her to give me some help. Here come the reinforcements. <laughs> We've brought coffee. Coffee? Oh, yeah. <laughs> legend, thank you. And a snack. Nice. Can you help me with the IBC? Yeah, you want my muscle? Thanks for your help. Welcome. That wasn't very good. Got another <laughs> one. There we go. That's a bit better. Right, so now the IBC's in place, thanks to my glamorous assistant. I just bounced the camera, boy. And I think I've got probably about an hour left in me until I have to get some food because my tummy is going crazy. So in this next hour, I'm gonna try and get this plumbed up, get the pipe running to the nearest well, get the pump going and get this full of water. Right, so my first attempt to get a pipe into the well failed badly <laughs> because this little guy, so this is the end that's in the well with a filter on, 
it's just buoyant so it just floats around so now I'm going to go and get some gaffer tape I'm going to tape a stone or a brick or something to this and then give it another go right look at this monstrosity hopefully this will work well that seems to have worked I can't tell you how tightly I was holding on to the pump the second I'd thrown it. I had the camera in one hand, I threw the rock with the pipe in the other. The second I'd released it, grabs hold of the pump because I just had visions in my head of just the pump getting dragged in and plop. So I didn't have enough of the big chunky pipe to make it all the way from the well to the IBC. It's pretty far, that pipe's 25 meters and I'm short probably by about 10. So I've gone and got a trusty hose pipe and now I'm gonna sort of Frankenstein the two together to make a join and hopefully that'll get us all the way. Now this is a used IBC and I've just taken the top off and it stinks of like PVA glue and I've just looked inside and there's loads of kind of glue residue and things in there so I think the first thing to do is try and get some water in here, give it a bit of a swirl around, drain it out and then fill it up. So that's everything rigged up, primed in terms of plumbing. Now I just need to get the Jenny going and pray that uh, this is gonna work because I've never pumped out from this well before. I've never even used that pump on a well before. So touch wood, it's all gonna go to plan. <laughs> So I've turned the pump on, but with all the noise from the Jenny, I can't actually hear if it's working properly. So I'm just running over now to see if it's actually going into the IBC. Oh, this isn't a good, okay, there's nothing in this hose pipe. No, hmm, time for troubleshooting. Oh. Okay, it's, Definitely working. Oh. Wow. I've just got absolutely drenched. I'm not sure why it's really leaking from one of the pipes as well. Hopefully, oh my God. The hose has come out of the IBC, but at least it's working. That's good news. Whew. There we go. Good there. Right, now while that IBC is filling up, just a little explanation for you in case anybody else has a similar problem. Although I'd primed the pipe going into the well and I'd primed the pump, the issue was the water that was in the pipe in the well that I primed was just slowly seeping down because I took too long. So all I did was remove that, prime it to pump it up a bit more, get it in as quickly as possible and turn the uh, pump on straight away and that seemed to do the trick. See you in a bit. Love you very much. <laughs> Have a safe trip. Okay, drive safely. Ah, oh, so we've just dropped Victoria at the train station because she is heading off to Lisbon and then flying back to the UK, only for a short trip because her brother had a baby last month and this is the first opportunity she's had to go back to meet 
the new Bubba. I would have loved to have gone back with her, but somebody has to stay here and take care of the gruesome twosome. <laughs> and you know, this is just part of when you move abroad, you know, you have to make sacrifices. You can't always be there when you want to be, but it's just part and parcel with it. And you have to make peace with that. We've made peace with that. And you know, Victoria's compromises. She gets to go back now instead of the week after the baby was born. And I'll get to meet the little baby boy the next time I'm back in the UK. So I'm back at the farm, time to head down to the tiny house and start on the jet washing. It's going to be a bit of a funny afternoon with Victoria gone because if you'd have seen a few videos ago I said that Poppy is really suffering from separation anxiety and although we're working on crate training for her it does take time. So ordinarily if I was to come down here I'd leave Poppy with Victoria. Obviously Victoria's flying today so this is going to be a real test. I've put Poppy in the crate. So far we've worked up to about 10 minutes or so but I'm going to try and push it a bit and go 20 minutes and then go back up and check on her fingers crossed bedding and everything else inside her crate won't be destroyed. So after I finished filming yesterday uh, I rigged the IBC up with some hose so I put a tap on there running down off this thick one inch pipe coming down off the terrace and then this pipe runs round and what I've done on the end is attach a tiny little bit of kind of normal garden hose 15 mil hose and that's because first of all i need this attachment to actually get it into the pressure washer but second of all hopefully this should come down with a good flow rate in here and then it'll increase the pressure in this last bit before it goes into the pressure washer and hopefully that'll create enough pressure for it to work <laughs> So the generator has just run out of fuel. That's good timing so I need to go back and check on Poppy anyway. But a couple of things. First of all, I'm really happy with how little water it's used so far. And I've probably done a third of the back. And you know, this is the grimiest area. So it's definitely not gonna take as much as this to do the rest of the building. Right, I'm gonna go get some fuel for the generator, have a little break, check on Poppy. Fingers crossed everything's not destroyed in her crate. God, I feel absolutely filthy. I'm glad I wore dirty clothes today. Hey buddy, how's Poppy? Hello. Hello little doggy. Good girl. Nothing's ripped up. Good girl. So as you can see, sun is setting. That's me done for the day. I managed to do all of the back of the house, which is really good progress. Now I'm off to walk the dogs, 
cook some dinner, have a night to myself with Victoria being back in the UK. I think it's gonna be a lads night, beers and the World Cup. I'll see you tomorrow. I'd say late start for me today. Does anybody else do this? But when your partner goes away, you think, okay, I'm gonna watch all those films and television programs that I've been saving to watch by myself because your partner doesn't like them. So I stayed up late. I then fell asleep in front of the television, obviously woke up all groggy. Anyway, woke up late as a result of my late night, then took the doctor a walk, head wasn't very well. So I've stayed with him for a bit. But yes, yeah, ended up meaning it's quite a late start to the day. My life falls apart when Victoria's not here. <laughs> I'm only joking, it's not that bad, but yeah, it definitely is a late start. So I'm gonna try and make up for some lost time. I love how this is just bringing this building back to life. Look at the difference here. So that's what it was. And that's the little bit of the same stone that I've just cleaned. It's amazing. I'm just going through and doing all these corner ones. It's brightening up the building so much. So there you have it. That's the front complete. You can see here on this side where it's drying out just how bright it's making it. And it's so satisfying seeing this, just to know that we're putting in the effort to bring this place back to life after so many years of neglect. Right, I'm just hiding out here around the back out of the sun because I can barely look into the camera. But just to say, this is by no means a perfect job. I'm gonna have to do this again. Once we have come and taken all of this concrete mortar out of the walls, I'm gonna have to pressure washer all of this again anyway, just to get it nice and clean before pointing with the lime. A couple of things I will say for anybody else who's interested in doing this. First of all, I specifically purchased a low pressure pressure washer. So that pressure washer only goes up to a thousand PSI and that was basically a recommendation by many many people of uh, when you're pressure washing granite don't do a too high pressure because it will damage the stone even with that small pressure washer I definitely experienced that to a degree when you're going on certain places in the corners or where the stone is already slightly damaged it blasts it off instantly the second thing is to plan a bit more time than you think it's gonna take because I've done lots of pressure washing back at our old house in the UK, but you know, pressure washing uh, kiln dried bricks or paving slabs is very different because it's flat and granite is so textured. So whereas you can't just go straight one way, you're having to come from this angle and this angle and up and down. So it's a lot more time consuming and you'll therefore use a lot of water or a lot more water, sorry, than you would ordinarily. And lastly, unfortunately, it didn't uh, remove that much of the concrete mortar. I had lots of comments on a previous video of people saying, just pressure wash it. All the pressure washer did was remove the loose bits, but things like this, uh, where it's extremely hard, I'll try and see if you can see the profile of this, how big this is. You know, it's not touching it at all. This is rock solid. So I still need to go around with a chisel, with a drill, with something to remove all of this. But then I think if I pressure washer afterwards, it should blast a lot of it out. I am also gonna try and treat this both inside and out with an acid. I've got muriatic acid, I think that's how you say it. It's basically hydrochloric acid and that's meant to break it down. But 
I need to do it on a test area first of all because although it works really well on brick and on like paving slabs, lots of people say it's dangerous to use it on granite because it basically oxidizes and turns the granite like a rusty color. So I need to test that on an inconspicuous area another day. But for now, I'm going to go refill the IBC because I've used about three quarters of it. Then I'm going to move onto the inside and I'm going to try and get as much of the dirt off the walls internally as possible. But I'm going to leave you here because I don't have a waterproof camera and it's a tight little space. So I will show you the results of that next time.